Hello and welcome to Viewpoint. I'm Valdir Rasuluhub. Join me now to discuss the latest report of Transparency International on corruption perceptions. Is Mr. Andriy Musov of Transparency International Ukraine. Ms. Musov, welcome back to Viewpoint. Hello. <clears throat> so, Ms. Musov, Transparency International issued um, the report on corruption perceptions where Ukraine was ranked really low, uh, just uh, one point up from last year's uh, from last year's position. What does that mean? Well, basically, it means that the anti-corruption policies of the post-Euromaidan Ukrainian government are ineffective, they're weak, the implementation is weak, or they're just uh, some, some of the policies, so they are just at this stage of you know, development of some discussions, etc., etc. So basically, if we would compare with uh, comparable countries like uh, with Georgia and uh, with their anti-corruption breakthrough in uh, like 10 years ago, then we are too slow. Certainly, we are just like lagging behind. <clears throat> okay, let's 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 go to this this comparison. Um, how long did it take Georgia to eradicate corruption? Um, certainly, I wouldn't say that they uh, eradicated corruption, but uh, they made uh, uh, well significant improvements. Yeah. Let's, okay, let's talk yeah. about significant. So, how long did it take Georgia to do that? Uh, six years. It's like they improved their position by two times uh, in uh, six years. Uh, after immediately after uh, Saakashvili came to power, it's like 2004, uh, and then in 2010, 11, they improved by two times, and it's been real kind of uh, breakthrough for them. So basically, Ukraine isn't doing so bad, considering that <clears throat> the systemic fight with corruption started two years ago. So mm -hmm. if we go follow the the, the, the Georgia example, uh, Ukraine still has four more years to go. Yeah, yeah, certainly, but this is not the uh, you know the uh, the point to 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 be satisfied because even if we would compare uh, what Georgia did in two years in first years and uh, what actually what we are doing Ukraine is doing then we are we are really lagging behind and actually uh, already there are signs that. Uh, uh, you know, the willingness of the political elite of Ukraine is just like slowing down willingness to really fight corruption. So basically all these talks about fighting corruption, about uh, changing the laws which will uh, allow to eradicate corruption are basically just the talks. Uh, nothing is, <laughs> nothing particular is being done. Mm. No, I wouldn't say so, certainly, but uh, I would say that uh, uh, when we are talking about uh, uh, expectations, you know, and uh, actually actual experience of, uh, say, like beneficiaries of uh, anti-corruption uh, fight, meaning businesses, uh, citizens, um, foreign investors, then certainly they do not feel uh, that actually the, there is a real uh, anti-corruption fight. That's a problem. That's why actually our index, uh, index is about perception perception of beneficiaries, of recipients, you know, of uh, uh, anti-corruption governmental policies. So can you tell us a little bit more how mm -hmm. this um, rating is compiled? Um, who do you talk to? What mm -hmm. figures you look at? So how does it work? In order to be, uh, to be uh, objective, this index is compiled by the results of uh, uh, studies, uh, evaluations, uh, research uh, done by renowned international organizations so like, I don't know, World Bank, Beltasman Foundation, then uh, uh, surveys conducted for the, uh, also for the, uh, some worldwide uh, uh, business associations. And uh, um, today's index uh, comp is uh, compiled from uh, more than uh, 10 studies uh, conducted last year. So, uh, and it is, uh, uh, it is done on purpose, so that uh, it should be unbiased, balanced, and it should uh, uh, actually uh, take into account uh, views and actually expectations and perceptions of all, you know, key stakeholders of this anti-corruption reform. What was the reaction of the Ukrainian government to your report? Uh, so far there was no, uh, I wouldn't say that there was a, a reaction, I mean, uh, direct, but <laughs> at best there was no manipulation by the results. Uh, you know, if we would look into our neighboring uh, Russia, then last year they even, uh, Putin even started talking that, okay, guys, uh, Transparency International Index is biased, it is Western, uh, pro-Western, pro-US, something like that, you know. Let's do our own uh, anti-corruption, uh, you know, index or something like that.
Luckily, we don't have such an intentions in, in Ukraine. And luckily, so far, they did not plunge into, you know, manipulating with figures, with the rankings and uh, etc. Understood. Um, a lot of government officials, and just a few days ago, we had uh, Mr. Dmitroshin here in this studio saying that 2015 was the year of laying the foundation to fight the corruption, that 2016 <sighs> will be the breakthrough year. You at Transparency International Ukraine, do you agree with that? I wouldn't, actually, uh, because uh, what we ran just recently into a huge problem with the launch of the new uh, system of electronic uh, asset declarations of all public officials in the country, starting from the president of Ukraine and going to like rural councils. Uh, you know, and uh, uh, what we saw that uh, despite promises by the president, by the ministers, uh, nothing is done. And actually, uh, the government, which is actually responsible, directly responsible for launching the system, uh, is uh, uh, started manipulating, started, uh, you know, kind of uh, saying that, okay, guys, it is the civil society who is to be blamed, uh, you know, for uh, too slow uh, launch of the uh, this electronic system. Then uh, members of parliament started talking that, okay, guys, we would have to disclose far more information about ourselves. We are not satisfied with it. It's an intrusion into our personal life, etc., etc. Whereas actually, this system is kind of, you know, like a weapon of mass destruction uh, for a public officials. La in the second half of last year, Ukraine launched the uh, National Anti-Corruption Bureau, the National Anti-Corruption Prosecutor's Office. What is the view of Transparency mm -hmm. International Ukraine on these institutions? Do you think they will be an effective tool in combating corruption? Yeah, actually, uh, uh, we do hope that the National Anti-Corruption Bureau, which already started working, that it will uh, fulfill, actually, meet expectations and hopes. And uh, uh, actually, their first results are pretty encouraging, you know, and finally, we've got these specialized anti-corruption uh, prosecutors. And uh, uh, though we do remember that, actually, uh, when uh, both the, these institutions and the Anti-Corruption Prosecutor's Office and the Bureau were created, there were again a lot of problems and scandals because uh, the 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 political at least some part of political elite uh, you know try to uh, put uh, uh, in, not independent people into the management you know yeah and that's actually that's why we were meeting with you last yeah. time uh, when we were discussing your report uh, which directly uh, accused uh, yeah. general prosecutor yeah. shocking yeah. and tampering with the selection yeah. process of these of these prosecutors. Yeah, yeah. So my question is, despite the fact that your organization named Mr. Shokin as someone who's halting the reforms, uh, the United the ambassador of the United States uh, to Ukraine, Victoria Nuland's uh, assistant secretary of state on Eurasian affairs, everybody is naming Viktor Shokin as the key figure who the, the general prosecutor who's who's halting the reforms in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Yet he still is in the office. What is your take on that? No, certainly, we do uh, support our previous statement and our previous view that uh, Mr. Shokin should be dismissed. Yeah, you know, but what is, uh, what, is, what is your take on the fact that he is still in the office? What does that mean? Uh, unfortunately, uh, we are afraid that uh, this is the factor which will uh, slow down, you know, really slow down uh, a real uh, punishment of uh, corruptioners. Because still, uh, general pro even after the reform, uh, whatever it, it might be, it is, it's effectiveness, but uh, whatever. Uh, um, still, the general prosecutors of an end shocking itself. He has uh, uh, a lot of powers, informal or formal powers, you know, to uh, investigate, to launch investigations. And uh, then we saw his attempt, you know, just to uh, say, um, to impede upon the uh, um, launch of the you know, like real work of the National Anti-Corruption Bureau, when he tried to, you know, to uh, transfer a lot of uh, investigations yeah, Mr. Musso, to but this is bureau. up to the president of Ukraine to submit yeah, right. the dismissal of the yeah. uh, general prosecutor to the parliament. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he's... Uh, so uh, what does that mean that President Poroshenko is mm -hmm. not serious about 
fighting corruption in Ukraine. <laughs> yeah, it means that he follows uh, traditions of his predecessors, of Yanukovych, of whatever, of Kuchma, that actually everything should be under control, uh, informally, certainly. Uh, uh, that uh, all law enforcement bodies should be under his uh, strict control, even uh, if uh, it is about anti-corruption fight. And uh, he promised so many uh, times to our Western partners that, okay, this is our top priority and uh, I will do anything uh, possible and impossible, you know, really to, to secure these reforms. Yeah, it looks like the, cor the corruption fight in Ukraine is really on a very slow pace. Mr. Musov, as always, uh, good talking to you. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, we were discussing Transparency International's latest report on corruption. I'm Volumen Thank you for watching Viewpoint.